in your room or in your car, because he says airflow is also an important way to combat the coronavirus. Sharon? All right, Martin, thank you. And as you heard in Martin's piece, there is a new study out today which finds the coronavirus death toll could actually be as great as the 1918 flu pandemic. That pandemic, of course, the deadliest in recent history. A third of the world's population was infected and they estimate 50 million people were killed uh, over two years. Uh, out front now, Dr. Jeremy Faust, the lead researcher on that study, also an emergency physician in Boston and an instructor at Harvard Medical School. My man Faust. So Dr. Faust, look, this is a really sobering conclusion, you know, because we've Going tended to look at 1918 as a percentage of population and say, oh, well, th this, this won't be anywhere close to that. But you've looked at the numbers in the first two months uh, here in New York City. You found the relative increase in deaths was substantially greater than during the peak of the 1918 flu pandemic. So... So, so tell me, um, you know, what you saw and how, do, how you get to this, this, this very sobering possible conclusion. Thank you for having me. The point of this research that Carlos Del Rio and I did in JAMA Network Open is to really try to contextualize just what it is we are all living through. How does COVID-19 compare to 1918 H1N1? And in the early outbreak in New York, COVID-19 appears to have been killing at a rate of about 70% as bad as, as 1918 H1N1. And what's more amazing is we've actually leapfrogged. The de you actually were more dangerous to live in April in New York in 2020 than you were to live in 1915, just 100 years ago. So it's amazing Ouch. that we now are sort of living with a death count that rivals Higher. what was common 100 years ago. I think people don't realize Population that. So why, why is expansion. that? I mean, you look at this and say, okay, 1918 was an H1N1, it was a flu. That could never happen now because of the technology and the ventilators and intubation. Don't All these things we can do now that we couldn't do then. And yet you're telling me the conclusion is, is that your increase was even greater than 1918. I mean, how is this possible? It's really humbling. The We humans live in a, in a, a very diverse wor world. There are viruses that are very strong. And this one is proving to be a formidable foe. And we need to acknowledge that immediately because even, as you say, even with our technology, we're having a lot of trouble keeping up with it. If we didn't have all the things you said, the numbers that we, of, of, of the dead would be higher. So all we know is that even with our technology, we're, the New York experience, something that was 70% as bad. And again, it, actually from our baseline, it's actually more of a shock to our system because we're used to less death at baseline. Right, yes. right, because because of all the technology, the, the preventative care, everything, right? Well, okay, so the, the, the University of Washington model, um, that influential model, right, that gets used a lot, so it's the best kind of projection that we have, and they're now projecting the death toll. This time could reach 300,000 Americans by December 1st. Now, when you look at the 1918 flu pandemic, it came in three different waves over two years, and everyone now is counting on this, you know, vaccine to do some kind of magical stoppage of the whole thing early next year. Putting that aside, what do you expect this pandemic will, will look like in terms of waves and death? Have you been able to, to kind of come to any conclusions there? What I can say is that COVID-19 belongs in the conversation in the ballpark of, of 1918. And what I can say is we don't know where we are. We're six months in, but some places just started. They could, we, they could be one month in. So it could yeah. be that we, we don't get to, to 1918 numbers, and it could we, be that we surpass them. What we find in this study is that we actually have to ask that question, and our policies need to reflect that immediately. Congress has to act to support uh, health care and uh, keep everyone safe. So I hope they do that. Carpe um, diem. Dr. Foss, I appreciate your time, and thank you. Carpe diem. Thanks, thanks for covering it. Really appreciate that. All right.